friends, family, strangers, internet strangers, my 12 loyal followers, I present to you another watch review. Another Ingersoll. But that's okay because I think you're going to like this one. Well, it's one of my favorites. Uh, and believe it or not, I actually already have this watch. And I bought another one. But it's a different color, so that's okay. But I think you'll still like it. Because rose gold is not as popular as it once was. Still great. But I present to you... Drum roll. The Armstrong. All right, watch this video. Alright, so I know we've done this watch before, but um, this one's a little bit different. I mean, it's really not, but it has a different face. This one's got a blue face, and it's chrome slash stainless steel instead of the rose gold coloring. Um, I will say uh, this is definitely my overall favorite Ingersoll watch. Um, the, the, the rose gold one, this one the same. I, I would have a hard time differentiating between which one I liked better. Um, it is such a really exquisite style. Uh, I particularly like this um, this watch as a quartz. And I say that because the automatic version of this watch, and they do have an automatic version, uh, it shares the same proportions, same, same case. Uh, it does not have this. Uh, that's actually missing. I'll go into that in a bit. But uh, what it does is essentially, this is a date, and that's a week, I think it is. And, you know, okay, or I think that's that's the month, uh, day, or day, date, whatever. But they get changed by these buttons. And 
I never really like that. And I don't know if I will ever review one of those because I'm just not necessarily a fan of it. But uh, this one, as a quartz, is a legitimate chronograph and it's it's a no-nonsense watch. Now, it's got the, the oversized uh, crown, which is okay. I mean, it's a little it's, it's a little bit big. Probably could have just gone with that. But um, it works fine. Um, this is a true chronograph. It has uh, half seconds here. Uh, you can see it. I think each one is, uh, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, so this, this one counts seconds. Uh, and then this one is a 60 minute counter. So uh, every time this goes, this goes around, uh, it uses the large hand for the full one second counter. And once that goes around completely, it begins to tick off the minutes at the nine o'clock location sub dial. So the, the dial at the, what is it? At the three o'clock location does, does the half, uh, you know, it does the tenths of a second. You can see it and it does it for the first, like, I don't know, uh, minute or so, just in case you want to record like the tense. Um, but yep, works solid. Uh, and then the, the sub dial at the six o'clock location is the normal um, second counter for up to a minute. And, and that was typically what you would use. And so the, actually, I, I will say it's a little bit better, although it may not look like the difference. The amount of torque needed between the large hand and the small hand is significant enough that this actually does improve the uh, the battery uh, the battery life by to, to some extent I think we'll go into the movement uh, video in a minute but I believe this is a three or four year as opposed to like a two to three um, let's see what else can we talk about um, one of the things I like about it is that you can adjust the tachyometer here uh, with this which is really cool um, so you can kind of adjust um, if you were going going to uh, time somebody I mean nobody really uses watches quite honestly for timing uh, they don't have to. Back in the day, people didn't have uh, cell phones, so people had to actually use these things. But uh, now it's just for fun, really. It's a nice, cool thing to have. Um, you know, it adds some interest to the watch, and, and I certainly am all about that. I mean, when it comes down to it, really, what do you need, right? But like a $10 Timex, that's all you really need to tell the time. But, um, you know, why just tell the time when you can make a fashion statement? Um, let's see what else about this watch. It is 316, uh, 316 stainless steel. It's solid stainless steel. It's a very good watch. It's got some good weight to it. Uh, I'll go into that in a minute. Um, let's see. It has a sapphire coated crystal. Now this is a domed crystal, which you can see slightly domed. It is, it, it's sapphire coated. It has three layers of sapphire coating, uh, a lot like what what Wenger does on some of their watches, which is okay. Uh, it, it's it's much better than just a standard hardened mineral crystal, but I still really like it, um, even if it isn't in fact uh, solid sapphire. Uh, this watch retails for seven hundred and ninety five dollars, but uh, you can find it on average for about one hundred fifty dollars. Fantastic watch. Um, when I open this one up for the movement video, I'm going to go ahead and also change the battery. Um, again, Ingersoll is a, it's a Hong Kong owned company. It originally started off as an American company. And then for say the past 60, 70 years, it was a British company. Uh, it's a British subsidiary of Xeon. You can see that uh, inspection stickers on there. Xeon, which is a Hong Kong company, but uh, most of their designers are American and or French or German, uh, but they do, in fact, uh, it is predominantly a British company, which is which is fine, um, but their styling and their attitude is very much American. Uh, that's that's sort of the that's sort of their selling point, I would say. Um, you know, it's really hard to get anything nowadays that's that's not um, um, that's not in some way um, multinational. Um, the leather strap in this is actually quite nice. Um, it's not a Horween like some of the others, but that's okay. Uh, it's a you know, Ingersoll really does use some of the best leathers that you can possibly get in the industry. Uh, 
Corween being one of them. This watch is a very nice, supple leather watch. It is very good quality. Um, I think the only reason why it's not Horween is because at the time they weren't, they didn't have a contract with them. Uh, their watches are very similar to, interesting, you know, the style is very similar to the TW Steel Dutch Company, but this is a great, great leather strap. It feels excellent. Uh, calf underside, it's real leather on the top. Um, it's signed on the buckle. You can see that, I'll probably take it off. Uh, signed on the buckle, signed on the side, which I think is fantastic. Signed on the face, signed on the leather itself, and of course signed on the case back. Uh, another thing about this watch that is spectacular, it is 10 ATM, uh, so that's 10 atmospheres, 10 bar for my uh, European and, and Canadian uh, friends, or just pretty much everyone else. Uh, that's uh, 100 meter uh, water resistance and you know I, I have to say for a watch that has so many uh, buttons and switches off of off the case it is pretty spectacular I think if any one of these was square or something to the fact it probably wouldn't be it'd probably be a 5 ATM uh, being round it gives it a little bit better uh, you know you can have a round casket which is much easier to uh, ensure water resistance but um, Pretty spectacular that it's got these many little buttons and switches on it and that it's still a 10 ATM. Um, 10 ATM is quite good. That will allow you to, um, you can go snorkeling with this. Of course, you wouldn't want to have this leather, leather strap. Uh, you probably want to put something else on it. Like, uh, let's see, if I was personally going to put a strap on it, I might put something on it like, like this, which I think would be really cool. Imagine this on here. Um, I think it's too small, of course. No, all oh, that fits. Oh, get myself into trouble here. But I think that this might be really nice on there. It goes really well. But um, yeah, you can you can take a shower with this. You can wash your dishes, wash your hands, jump on a pool, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can do that, and you won't ruin the watch. Um, before I weigh this, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other things that this watch comes with. Put that to the side there, silk gel. Don't eat. Um, the manual, we've gone into detail, of course, but not everybody uh, has seen all my videos. So, um, lifetime warranty. All watches from 2016 from Ingersoll have lifetime warranty. Their, uh, their quartz line is from 2014. This has uh, multiple different languages. Uh, I think it has a warranty signature information in the back. But of course, if it isn't signed, then it isn't necessarily legitimate uh, when you get it gray market. That's often the case. But if you can show, um, usually Ingersoll will is quite good about this. I've talked to a couple of people that have actually gotten service on their Ingersolls uh, for whatever reason. Um, and uh, they will they will honor so long as you can show uh, that it was purchased at some point. So. Uh, and that it was brand new. Um, this video would count as, as proof of that or simply just an invoice from where you bought it. Um, but it's got every single version of watch that they have, both automatic and manual, so quite good. They even have some manual wine ones. Um, let's see what else that this comes with. It comes with this uh, pewter um, authenticity card course this is just a fun little thing that it comes with it doesn't actually really do anything it is a uh, um, a paperweight of sorts quite honestly but still pretty cool it really shows the attention to detail that they're trying to put into this watch and and again you know I've always said really that um, the amount of money that a company spends on a box is wasted because it should be spent on the watch but I mean what can I say this is it's really it's quality I would say that this quite honestly really rivals Rolex and you know Rolex has some excellent watches um by all means um but you know you are paying a little bit for the name and that's okay right but um you are getting spectacular value with these Ingersoll watches and if I hadn't mentioned of course this is solid wood which isn't it's it's excellent I mean if you were going to keep a box this is something cool you know you could if you only got one of these, right, you pull all this stuff out and then you could just like keep stuff in it like, uh, I don't know, um, a couple watches, maybe some cufflinks or something. It's kind of neat. 
All right, let's get into the uh, weight of the watch real quick before we start going to the movement. Since we're here, I might as well do this now. I'll do it in grams for my international friends. Let me see if I can. 133.5, so that's not bad. That's a good half to it. Um, this watch is not ridiculous. I'll measure it later. Um, but before we go any further, let's go ahead and talk about the movement. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's either a Miyota Seiko, but we'll see. The Ingersoll Armstrong chronograph uses the 6S20 no-jewel tuning fork quartz movement by Citizen Miyota. This is a large size, high quality movement designed specifically to support a standard one hour chronograph with an additional 1 20th second counter sub dial complication. Miyota is a Japanese movement manufacturer that is part of the Citizen Group of Companies. The Citizen Group's movement brand, which was launched in 1959, now produces some 100 million calibers per year in its various factories. Most of them are quartz calibers. The Citizen Group is highly integrated since it's also a major player in the manufacture of machine tools and CNC's which it supplies internationally. Even the oil used in the machines is a homemade product. This integration allows Citizen Group to support the highest standard of quality, able to quickly detect problems and defects on assembly lines. At regular intervals, an alarm sounds and components are discarded down a separate track. The 6S20 is a six-hand caliber with a date of month at the 430 location. The second counter is located in a sub-second dial at the 6 o'clock location. The chronograph timer utilizes the large central second hand with 60-minute counter at the 9 o'clock location and a 120th second counter at the 3 o'clock location. The 6S20 uses the SR927W silver oxide battery and supports a hacking feature for extended battery life. Typical battery life is estimated at approximately four years fully engaged with up to eight years with hacking feature enabled. Accuracy of the movement is quite good, maintaining plus or minus 20 seconds per month at normal operating ambient temperature range. All right, so now you know what kind of movement's in it, uh, and you realize it is a no-nonsense Beast 6S20 Miyota movement. Uh, that is a, a gigantic movement. Um, you can see it is definitely no joke in this watch. Uh, it The movement literally takes up the entire case, and you will see that in the pictures. Um, and so uh, I have a friend who was asking me why I would bother uh, reviewing uh, really the same watch that I had already reviewed. So this is the uh, the Ingersoll part of uh, the um, Ingersoll Armstrong Part Two. And so my answer to that is maybe I think I didn't do a good enough job really expressing how much I like this watch uh, the first time that uh, I I reviewed it. Um, you know, it is slightly different, right? You know, we've talked about the different numbering sequences for um, the the model numbers for these watches. Uh, this one is the what 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 is it? The uh, I zero two zero zero one, and I think the other one was uh, an O three. Um, same watch, of course, but different face and different color and different uh, strap combination. But, um, you know, this, this is really, this watch in particular has really become, this style has really become my favorite of all the Ingersolls. I mean, I have a lot of favorites and I know you guys are probably getting sick of me and, and on, on these. And as I said, uh, Ingersoll doesn't have many more models left for me to review. So that is a huge positive because here you go, right? It's one of the last ones probably. I know I've got... I have three more coming in the mail, uh, and then I'll probably start hitting up some of the automatics, but um, I do also have some other watches uh, from brands that you guys have not seen yet, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, I have, uh, I'll, I'll have to do those in, in the coming weeks, but uh, you know, I really do want to emphasize how much I like, I like this particular watch um, among many of the others. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
uh, start the measurements. And remember, as I always say, you do this only with a, a plastic caliper. You do not want to ruin. Um, so it says 47. I don't think that's right. I think it's just I'm having a hard time. Yeah, 46, 46 millimeter width. The, uh, the lug is solid 22. And the case depth is going to be kind of big. Let's see what we can get it to. 115.4. So I'm going to say 15.5. Um, all right. What else can I talk about? Well, let's check out the loom because I know I haven't done that yet. So all the hands uh, illuminate. Uh, there's not much to it. Kind of would have been a little bit more helpful if they had actually put some loom on the dial itself. But unfortunately, that is not the case. But still nice. Um, I've pretty t pretty much talked this uh, <laughs> this wash to death. But uh, one of these will be going up for sale. I'm going to ask my wife which one she thinks I should keep. So whether it's the rose gold or this one, I'll put them side by side so you can see it. The other one will go right there. Uh, and if you're interested in the review that I did for this one, I will also put that at the top and you'll see it shoot across. Um, please discuss in the comments, which one would you keep? Um, that's actually going to be really good for me. Uh, I'll let you guys decide which one do I keep? Which one do I sell? Should I keep the gold one or do I keep the chrome one? Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, and I hope that you do. Please subscribe. Thank you very much.